Okay. Let me just say good evening to everyone. My name is Al Scott. I'm the chairman of the Chatham County Commission. I have joining me Congressman Buddy Carter, first district congressman who represents all the coastal counties that's impacted by the hurricane. And thank you, Buddy, for being here. We have a Chatham County Metro Police Department, but we also have a high sheriff who has been working very closely with the Metro to ensure safety, and that's Sheriff Welcher. He's joined us in case uh, you have any questions of the Sheriff Department. We also have with us the mayor of the largest uh, municipality in Chatham County, Mayor Ada DeLoach is here. And we have our own expert and our SEMA director, Dennis Jones, who's standing right behind me, who will be happy to talk to you about forecasts, projections, or the status of reentry, status of evacuation, or anything else you may want to know about the storm. Let me just begin by, by saying uh, that as for the most part, the evacuation of Chatham County is over, that phase of it. For those who have not left, we're urging them to hunker down wherever they're at. If they're at home, they need to find an inner room away from the windows and stay there. I know it appears to be calm outside now and just rain, but we ex still expect extreme wind, and, and that's a concern. I will also just remind folk that the governor called for a mandatory evacuation for all areas east of I-95. And this morning, I signed an emergency declaration that encompasses the remainder of the county and impose a curfew. And the purpose of that curfew, I wanna make it very clear, is that we are not going to tolerate looting, or break-ins, or robberies, and the purpose of that curfew is to make certain that once it's dark until daylight, that if you're out on the street, you will be stopped, you will have to explain your whereabouts, and let me just tell you this, that if you're in violation of the curfew, you're subject to a $500 fine and 60 days in jail. I just wanna make that very clear to those out there. And the reason that that curfew is necessary, we have about 25% of the county that has evacuated, and we wanna make certain that those areas that have evacuated, that their properties are as safe as possible, and that's one of the reasons for the curfew. And we are already getting calls about return. And I'm going to let Dennis speak to that in just a few minutes. I also want to just mention that we've got a confirm, a confirmation of tornadoes in the Pula area. Uh, we uh, do not know the extent of any damages any damage at this time, uh, but there were a confirmation of a couple of tornadoes. So we are under a tornado watch until 8.30. And I will also mention and dispel this rumor because we've got calls suggesting that Georgia Power was cutting power intentionally off of certain areas. And I wanna tell you that we have had reports of blown transformers and in the fact, if you have a blowing transformer, one of the way you isolate it is to cut power to that transformer. So you may have some of that going on, but there's no intentional cutting of power to any residents. And we don't have a firm number, but it was somewhere a little over 100 residents that was without power as a result of those transformers blowing. Uh, there have been no report of major flooding in the county, with the exception of Highway 80 to Tybee during high tide, 
There was considerable water on Highway 80. It was impassable. And we hope that no one is on Tybee that's trying to leave at this point. And again, I want to emphasize the curfew and to make it very clear that it will be enforced. You will be stopped if you're out at night by either Metro, Sheriff, or one of the municipalities who are participating, and that's all the municipalities in the county in this curfew. And uh, another question has been raised is how many citizens have been evacuated? And I mentioned earlier that roughly 25% of the county has left. Uh, we did transport uh, almost 2,200 citizens who could not or did not have transportation to leave town, uh, transportation was provided. And uh, this is in the mayor's arena, but we've got reports of people calling 311 for downed trees. And we've been asked that you not call 311 for downed trees if you're in the city of Savannah, unless that downed tree poses a hazard as on a power line or something to that extent. And with that, I'm going to ask Dennis to come up and to update us. And I would also ask if the congressman after Dennis would come up and uh, make some remarks. And then, Mr. Mayor, anything that you wish to add or the sheriff at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As all of you know, the storm is upon us as we speak. Uh, we do have sustained winds of about 40 miles an hour on the further eastern edge of the county with higher gusts. So as of right now, a lot of the emergency services have been pulled off the streets. Uh, all of our evacuation transportation resources have been pulled off the streets. We do have the last serial of buses that are headed to the Augusta area for sheltering. They have not reached the Augusta area as of yet, but they are out of harm's way and they will get there probably within the next hour or so. Uh, we still have a full staff of emergency operations uh, workers in the EOC behind me. The city of Savannah has their emergency coordination center activated. Other municipalities in Chatham County also have similar coordination centers, and we're in lockstep with each of those, communicating with them on an hourly basis. Right now, our focus is turning more toward the recovery and the initial response after the wind stops blowing. Now that we've been able to get people out, we need to focus on when are we going to get people back in. So for the, for the people who did decide to remain behind, we're taking a look at where those new population centers are, where the, the congregation of people who, who remained in Chatham County will be, so that we can take priority steps after the wind stops below in order to get uh, rescue services and also other human services to those people in those new population centers. So with that, um, as we start working our way back in, our first step is phase one, which means we're gonna come back in and render the area safe. We're gonna come back in and make sure that power lines are de-energized, that bridges are okay to move from A to B, that roads are passable. We're gonna do that with public safety. That's before we let any contractors in, before we let any, any of the public in. The next step to that is we've gotta make sure that essential services are established so that we can support the general population. So in that next phase, we'll be bringing in more public works, more contractors to come in and establish water services and establish utilities, uh, establish uh, sewer systems and health and medical services. So we gotta get those common services that, that the general public would expect. We gotta get those reestablished. The next phase is to allow the general residents to start coming back in in phases. They have to prove that they live or they have an interest in Chatham County, either with a driver's license, with a deed of record for a piece of property. We'll let those people come back in in phase three, and then phase four, we'll start letting the general public come back in. So again, we gotta establish the area safe. We gotta reestablish those critical services before we can let the property owners and the business owners in Chatham County come back in. So that's our focus for the next several hours as we wait out the storm to pass through. Uh, I really encourage all of you to, to make sure that you have a safe place to be. If you did stay behind, again, make sure that you are in a safe place in your home. Uh, make sure you communicate with your neighbors if they've stayed behind. 
And as long as we have power, as long as we have communication capabilities, make sure you touch base with somebody outside the area. Just so you have accountability, you have somebody outside the area who's looking out for your interests. All right, thank you. Mr. Carter? Before the congressman come up, I want to just make a correction. We have about 25% of the population that's left behind. About 75% actually left, okay? Yeah. Well, thank all of you for being here. Uh, obviously, very trying times. Folks, this is a serious situation. This is a very serious storm. Everyone here is taking it serious. I hope everyone out there at home is taking it serious as well. The worst is yet to come for Chatham County. We're gonna ride this through. We've already had a, a number of power outages down in Glenn and Camden County. Remember the first congressional district entails the entire coast of Georgia. My staff and I are available. We're in constant contact with all of the emergency personnel. If you need anything at all, just get in touch with, with, with someone and we'll make sure you're taken care of. The president has, has declared a state of emergency for the entire coast of Georgia. This is gonna help us, especially in the aftermath, especially where, where we'll need some funding for emergency services. So that's, that's a, a very positive step and we appreciate that very much. For those who stay behind, hunker down, be safe, make sure that you're safe. Make, be, folks, again, this is very serious. I wanna compliment everyone, particularly behind me, who's done an outstanding job, and encourage everyone, pray. Pray that this storm moves offshore and doesn't come in to harm anyone. Thank you very much. Mayor. I want to echo what Buddy just said. I want to emphasize the people that have worked very hard to make this happen in a way that I think was seamless. There's always errors or always things you can do better, but I think we've went, done an outstanding job as an overall community to weather this storm and to move forward with it and take care of the citizens that are here. Some that I have mentioned are, uh, you know, the city, the county, the uh, state of Georgia, the federal government. I missed a couple. I did not mention the school board. I want to make sure we, everybody realizes all those buses that took place, that took all the, uh, the police officers that were inside the uh, actual uh, civic center helping direct all that that was supplied by the school board so it's been an overall operation of the entire community of, of savannah and i can't tell you uh, it, it, i could be any prouder than i am now of the way these people have performed they perform professionally and it's a it's a, it's a great privilege to be here and be in front of you today saying that i have an opportunity to work with these people on a daily basis so thank you all for being here and we look forward to all the prayers that are come down the pipe and long term the recovery. That's a, we are we are here. It's time to get down through the storm, get the storm out of the way, and we'll get back to running business and we'll get back to cleaning up and doing what we need to do as Savannah to become the hostess south of be the hostess of the South. Y'all have a great day. Sure, if you have anything. I'd just like to thank everyone. It's been a learning uh, period for us at the Sheriff's Office, which is a little bit different from the police department. Uh, offered all my services. I had 76 officers that runs the court in the streets, and we offered them to Chief Lumpkin and them, uh, the mayor, uh, county commission chairman, Mr. Smith, Mr. Kegler. Everybody's been really receptive to all the things that have been happening. I have 1,604 inmates that I have to worry about that's right behind this building here. But my number one thing is I work for you, the public, and that was my job, to serve and protect y'all. And I think this whole community's done that. Everybody just standing behind me, and some of them's not here. I think everybody's learned to work together, put their differences aside and everything else, and we've come together as one team. <coughs> I'm, I'm open for any questions that anybody has for me. Sir? I also want to thank the governor who came down from Atlanta yesterday to inspect the situation and to offer any resources that the state had to assist the county. And I certainly want to thank him for that. And also with him was Jim Butterworth, Jim Butterworth, who is director of the State Emergency Agency and Homeland Security. And Jim has a representative here who, and I'll ask Dennis if you would uh, introduce uh, our GMA representative. 
We have a, a member from the Georgia Emergency Management and Homeland Security, Ms. Sherry Russo. She's been with us. We also have another member, Colin Hoff, who works the nighttime shift. So they're embedded with us. They have been for the last 24, 48 hours. So anything that we need from the state, we have the state's commitment by evidence of them being in our emergency operations center. And, and we also have behind me uh, the county manager, Lee Smith. We have both assistant county managers, Linda Kramer and Mike Kegler, who's here. And we also have Van Johnson of city council. At this time, if anybody have any questions, uh, one of us will try to answer it for you. I'm going to bring the expert up for that. What we're seeing right now, uh, obviously the winds are, are starting to encroach in Chatham County. The highest impacts we're looking at sometime after midnight. It could be between the midnight to 6 a.m. hours. Uh, you know, that's, that's the primary focus that we're looking at. We could possibly see hurricane force winds on the eastern edge of Chatham County, certainly tropical storm force winds throughout the county, but with a majority of, of the highest winds and the storm surge associated with this coming in the dark or in the nighttime hours. Uh, you know, Sunday morning or Saturday morning when you wake up, it's going to be windy, it's going to be rainy, there's going to be some strong winds. We'll probably already see down trees, down power lines, but throughout the day Saturday, we'll slowly start to see the system subside. Hopefully by Sunday, it'll be out of here. Sure. Uh, in the, the information we're getting from the National Weather Service, uh, you know, it fluctuates from sometimes we've seen 7 to 11 feet, sometimes it's 7 to 9, so roughly around that range. We've already seen some flooding uh, going out to the roads to Tyvee. I understand that has come and it's receded, but the highest impacts of the storm are still to come, however. So we do anticipate seeing that 9 to 11 foot of storm surge, and with that, it, it, it could put upwards of 2 feet over Tyvee Road. There's also several areas that come up into the rivers, Savannah River, Aguichi River, other tributaries, that we would most likely see some, some storm surge encroachments into those areas as well. So I, I know you're talking about early morning, but can you clarify if possible, I mean, like what kind of time, what, what the time is that we're talking about for anybody watching? Sure, it, it, it's very hard to, to actually narrow that down. That's why we generally give a range. But if I had to, to speculate based on the latest advisory, it could be anywhere from like two to four would be the strongest parts. Now, you gotta, you gotta realize the storm is very fluid, it's very dynamic, so it could speed up, it could slow down, the winds could shift at any moment. So, you know, that's why we're looking at after midnight, sometime before the daylight hours, we get that full range. But based on the latest advisory, uh, the strongest part of the winds based on the model runs, the computer, what the computer is telling us is between the two to four hour range. Would tornadoes be an issue? I, I did notice about an hour ago, SEMA said that there'll be tornado watch until midnight. Right. This says 8 p.m. That was just released. When can we assume those will subside? Uh, as the storm makes its way past us, obviously the tornado threat will become less of a, a severity for us. We did go into a tornado warning earlier and that tornado warning actually produced what we think is a funnel cloud over on the western edge of the county. It knocked out the top of some trees. It didn't actually touch down, thankfully. Uh, so I suspect throughout the night, we will most likely be going in and out of tornado warnings. But uh, I, the one you have right now is, it's a defined period of when we'd be out of the tornado watch. I wanna caution you though, we are in a tornado warning, or I'm sorry, a hurricane warning, and we'll stay in that hurricane warning until the threat from Matthew is past us. Uh, Chairman Stein, can you talk a little bit more about the curfew, uh, clarify when it exactly is, is it dusk to dawn, and uh, you know, those kinds of things, you talk about the fines again, please. I refer to it as dark to daylight. Dust may be confusing to some folk. So I, I simply said dust, dark to daylight. And, and so when the sun goes down, when it's dark outside, uh, you need to be off the streets, and you should not be back on the streets until the sun comes up. And if you want to put a time frame on it, it's roughly 7 to 7. Of a 75% number of people who evacuated, is that counting in full or in the mandatory evacuation? 
that's the entire area, the entire county. Did you, have you had any insta instances of looting or this is just a precaution? We have had some, some break-ins. Uh, we don't have uh, someone from Metro here to speak to it, but we have had some break-ins uh, on yesterday, not today. And that was one of the driving factors. Uh, uh, no, I do not, but you can sort of put a calculator to it. If you're talking about the island areas, you're talking roughly uh, 37,000 people, and we think about 75% of those have left. So as well, 75% of the islands evacuated? When I, I'm projecting 75% of the total county, and that's including the island, and really a, with a focus on the island because, for instance, if you take Bloomingdale and Pooler, I don't think very many people have left. I'll let Dennis speak to that. As I mentioned, the reentry phases, we'll go over that again. Phase one, render the area safe. Phase two, reestablish essential services so we can support the general population. Phase three, they have to show proof of ownership, proof of a, a, a business interest. They have to be able to prove that they have a reason to be in Chatham County. All right, those people who have a reason to be in Chatham County, we want them to get back. We want to give them time to assess their property uh, and, uh, and then provide those essential services for other people that may be coming back in. After we are assured that those essential services are established and those people who have an interest in Chatham County are satisfied with the level of service that they're getting, then we'll let the general population come back through for any other debris cleanup that may happen because that's going to take a long, long period of time. So uh, after phase four is, is where we'll start getting more back to a new normal. Now I wanted to also mention that this will be a rolling phases. You know, as we come through one area in phase one and we render that area safe, we'll move on to a next area, render that area safe while the previous area is now at phase two. So it'll be a, a cycle um, as we come through and progressively move west to east to make sure that we can get essential services and the general population back as quickly as possible. And we are, we are anticipating that initial uh, phase one, rendering the area safe, to start immediately. So as soon as the winds start subsiding and they get below that threshold of 39 mile an hour, if there's enough daylight left, we'll go ahead and start um, putting our, our emergency services crews out to render area safe. So again, we're, we're gonna do it as quickly as possible, but we gotta make sure that we have the safety of, uh, the safety of our emergency services crew is paramount. It could, be, it could be as early as late Saturday afternoon, but uh, hopefully, definitely, we'd have some people on the street looking at damage assessment, rendering areas safe no later than Sunday. One of the reasons for that, we want to make certain that we let residents back prior to letting tourists in. And we love tourists here, but we also love our residents. And so we've got to make sure they get back before we start letting tourists in. And, and that's really the focus on the ID check and making certain that we're, we're trying to discourage folk from coming until the population as a whole is back in place. And you must also keep in mind, and I was reminded uh, by this by uh, Georgia Power, they will not come in if the winds are over 39 miles per hour. And so the winds have to die down. And one of the things, we don't want folk coming in and their power lines uh, across streets and everything else and, and put people in further danger. So we want to go out and do an assessment. In fact, Dennis says he's going to try to speed things up by getting the helicopter and flying around, but I'm going to let Dennis do that. <laughs> well, I'm not going to fly the helicopter. <laughs> but we do have, uh, in Chatham County, we have what's called an ASOC or an Air Support Operations Center that's pretty much ran by the Georgia State Patrol and also Georgia Emergency Management Agency, as, as, long as, as well as aviation assets in Chatham County. They'll take their mission tasking from the Emergency Operations Center. So we'll tell them where the population centers are that we know of. 
We'll have them fly the emergency routes back into Chatham County, looking at bridges, looking at hazardous materials facilities to see if there's any environmental concerns, and then also making sure that we get that information communicated back to not only the EOC, but also the ECCs that are in each jurisdiction. Again, we got to maintain that information management first. We, we need to know what the hazards are. We need to know what the damages are. That will allow us to do a damage assessment properly, be able to get information to the state as quickly as we can, and also know where we need to target for our emergency services crews. Okay. And before we shut down, I want to recognize the county manager, see if he has any comments or anything that he wants to add to this press conference. Lee Smith. Good afternoon. I do want to uh, make mention, I think as the mayor did earlier, we do want to thank the school board uh, for their cooperation on transportation and also on our uh, chair, uh, Chatham Area Transit. Uh, without those folks, we could not have done what was uh, accomplished over the last 24 hours to get as many people out of the community as, as we have. So we appreciate that, but as the mayor said and the chairman, the cooperation has been great. Um, we, we go by the term Team Chatham. Uh, when the lights go off and things get uh, dark, and uh, the winds start blowing, everybody comes together. And that's what they've done here. That's what our teams are doing from Savannah, all the municipalities. Uh, at this point, it was emphasized today in an earlier conference, if you are staying in Chatham County while you still have power and you still have communications, we ask that you contact someone outside of Chatham County, a family member, a friend, or someone that you can tell them that you are here because it will be important for us, for them to contact us or someone to identify where you are at because staying here is dangerous. So we emphasize to all those listening, please contact an outside source to identify that you are here in the uh, uh, issue if we need to begin looking for people. So anyway, thank you very much and uh, we appreciate getting the information out. Thank you. Any closing remarks, Vince? Uh, I think it's already been said, but it bears repeating again. If you are here, make sure you are in a safe location. If you did decide to stay, be advised, emergency services crews are already pulled off the street and they're gonna stay off the street until it's safe for them to respond. So 911 calls that come in, you may not have somebody that's available to come get you until it's safe for them to do so. So please hunker down, as uh, was the term used earlier, make sure you're in a safe location in your home. God bless you and be safe. Any further questions? If not, thank you so much.